Hi, let's talk about gravitational potential. Since you have learned gravitational potential energy earlier, then gravitational potential should not be hard for you because the idea of this is simply um, gravitational potential energy taking away the idea of the mass. So if you try to look at the definition here, this is exactly the same as GPE, except here is at per unit mass. You can try to go and compare it. And therefore, for the formula, it will be this one. All right, it will be W, which is the work done, as in the gravitational potential energy, divided by the mass. And for the symbol of the gravitational potential, we use V. In case you're wondering why we have to use V, you may go and recall what you learned in circuit, in maybe IGCSE, uh, when we talk about potential, electrical potential, that will be V also, voltage. And so here is a similar concept. That's why we use V, but we will have a um, subscript G to refer it back to gravitational. And so the rest of the idea should be easy for you to deduce by yourself. For example, since we have learned, again, uh, gravitational potential energy expression in the previous video is negative G, big M, small m over R, then if you divide it by the M, which is referring to the point mass. And then you will take away the small m, and in that case, then you will leaving uh, only negative g big M over L. And for the unit, obviously, by looking at the definition, you can tell uh, W work done is joule, m is kg, and therefore the unit is joule per kg. And of course, it is a scalar. It has no direction, similar to energy. And therefore, it doesn't really matter what path you take. Uh, this is the same as if you imagine this is like the energy scape park. If you remember, there was a simulation from PHET uh, showing you oh, there's a skateboard with a person on top of it, and then you keep sliding back and forth, back and forth like that, right? And if you think about the energy at a particular time so the gpe and the ke and assuming there's no energy loss then it doesn't really matter uh, which path you take or how long time it passes as long as you are here and then uh, say this is the beginning and this is at this point this is the end and it, it doesn't really matter that if it go like this and then go back down or go like uh, say like this furthermore and they go back down or even just simply go straight to this the the energy right there is going to be the same again doesn't really matter what path you take and so let's try to do a practice question if you want to try it yourself you may want to pause the video now if not you can follow me through a few moments later all right so let me show you how we can do it this is a very simple question actually and the best part of gravitational potential is like we said it is scalar so it doesn't really matter what direction the the objects that is attracting you to um, you just have to add them together just like energy so uh, one thing you must not do is overthink this question and think oh um there's a direction here, you, okay, using this calc, uh, equation, you calculate the value, whatever it is, and then use this, uh, calculate whatever it is, and try to find the angle, and then you're doing those like trigonometry, those things. No, you don't need that. So what you need to do simply is just to apply the equation and calculate each of them directly and add them together. So here, I'll just write them at once. So G m would be the first one on the left 4.4 .4 times 10 to the power of 12 in kg this is good and the distance is already in meter so i just copy it and then plus another one although it is negative so big g the mass and then divide by the distance okay and then just leave your work to the calculator and so if I were you, I would try to save myself some work by extracting the negative G out. So what you get should be 4.4, that one, divide 3.5, that one. And then plus the one on the right without the G, so 6.2, that one. Divide 
2.0 that one of course with the uh, power of 10 and so you should get something like 1288 or you can well I, I guess I'll put it put down the full number and then uh, times negative G or you can just uh, calculate it at once if you have the value in your hand so eventually you should have something like 8.59 times 10 to the power of negative 4 and that would be the final answer not to forget the negative of course so let's put down since these are two sig figs so I will represent my answer in two sig figs also so 8.6 times 10 to the power of negative 4 what's the unit again? that would be joule per kg yay no trigonometry let's try the next question this is a good question that blends all the things that you learned so far so try it yourself and pause the video now a few moments later all right so next question is about the moon and the earth the mass is given so um whenever you see numbers i would prefer i'll suggest you to translate that into an equation and that will be a Inform information that you need later on so I will put down mm moon mass uh, equals to moon of the earth 81 times so obviously you have to put it right here yeah cause, I mean obviously moon is smaller so it has to be here and then the distance between the earth okay is this one like the total distance the mass of the earth is given okay it asks you to determine the distance uh, where at a line of joining these two uh, there must be a point where the force will be zero so this is a very classic question so I would probably draw a diagram actually so E represent F and then M it should be much smaller actually I represent the moon and there should be a line that joining them there must be right because there's just two point uh, joining them and um, they want to find the distance from the center of the earth so probably it should be further away from the earth I mean if you think about the size and also you know the uh, gravitational field strength on the surface at least then you know uh, earth should be stronger and therefore it should be closer to the moon and so I guess I would like to draw this roughly and I would define this as x right to be the unknown and then uh, the remaining will just be the subtraction of the total the total is 3.8 times 10 to the power of 8 meter so now we can construct the equation because at this point the gravitational field strength is the same so uh, you can say g e equals to g m because the gravitational field strength at that point is the same so referring to the general equation that will be the big G big M here is referring to the earth uh, or you can put the general equation first and then the small m is actually negated because we are talking about gravitational field strength in fact this question is the same as if they ask you gravitational force it's going to be the same because it's the same mass anyway same small mass and then uh, the distance will be x square equals to the other side for the moon so mass for the moon over this part of this thing like we said is the total minus x the unknown okay right here so um, first of all you can already cancel out the big G and for the M as we said uh, allow me to write faster here then the ME can be changed to mm with xt1 and then mm can cancel out mass of the moon can cancel out and so leaving you with all these things oops i almost made a mistake i forgot to put down the square here so yeah that is always a mistake that people usually make and you know what i think the question is designed to be convenient for you and there's a reason uh, not really a reason i mean probably naturally it's just xt1 times uh, but then if you look at that you can square root this easily so I would go to do that and also simplify this equation so 3.x times 10 to the power of 8 
minus sorry minus x. Uh, the square has been taken out by the square root, and then here you should have x t one square root will be nine, and then x square go to other side and square root, so it will become x. Okay, so I think you should be able to solve uh, the rest of the equation, uh, but I think I should represent the answer in two sec fig because d is only two sec fig so probably 3.4 is more appropriate 3.4 times 10 to the power of 8 meter for that distance okay so this is part a part b similar to the previous example you just have to calculate them separately and add them together for gravitational potential b because once again it is a scalar so uh, we can say vg equal to negative big g m of the earth divide the distance which we find earlier and plus again negative big g mass of the moon over uh, the other side of the distance which you have to minus and I think we can all tell it's 0 0.4 times 10 to the power of 8 and you just have to substitute everything because you have already got the number for the mass of the earth and you also have the relationship of these and therefore you can find out the moon mass as well and eventually substituting everything you will be able to find the answer negative 1.3 times 10 to the power of 6 to per kg lastly for part c it asks you to find potential energy so be careful with the wording potential and potential energy that means you have to multiply with the mass simply so uh, the answer is I mean the approach is simply um, W or you can write down GPD equals to um, VG times M which is the one that you find in the previous section times the mass which is 2500 zero, zero, kg and uh, you just have to use your calculator again so that's going to be negative 3.25 or 3.3 times 10 to the power of 9 joule this time remember it's just joule this time there's no kg uh, here because you already multiplied the mass very simple okay fine let me give you another kind of question which is more challenging so let's look at this one and you have to extract information from the graph this time so pause the video and try it out yourself a few moments later okay so first of all when you try to understand a graph you have to read the axis first so for the y-axis it is gravitational potential because you look at v it's right there and also horizontally x-axis is the distance out and it also tells you that this radius of this planet is 2 times 10 to the power of 9 which coincide with this value or is it what it's not even correct this is 10 to the power of 9 and this is 10 to the power of 6 10 to the power of 9 is nowhere near the axis of this this would be like 10 screen outside of this this paper Oh, definitely, this is a typo, okay, because supposedly uh, the reason why the line keep going like so high, like so, I mean, so deep down and so quickly is because it's getting so close to the planet. And at the same time, um, they may not be able to produce and tell you the, um, I, I want to say voltage, potential inside the planet because they take up space I mean you can't really talk about what if the mass is inside the planet I mean you could but then uh, it is not out of I mean this is not in the scope of IB physics uh, maybe if you have a chance we can talk about that later anyway this must be a typo so the power index should be 6 only and so um, what you want to do for this question is to find the work required that means the energy okay so that means gravitational potential energy not just potential that moving a mass that is uh, 3400 kg from the surface of the this from the surface to the distance of this one okay so uh, surface means like yeah really like this one so 
the value of this first of all you want to find the change of potential probably so delta v is going to be this one 26 okay that's the initial potential and when you go up to 7.5 then this should be this is 7 this is 7.5 so this should be the reading that you can take and yeah that should be the y value correspond to it so negative 7 so you just have to minus that and you will find the potential difference yes it's the same potential difference as you as you pronounce as you call in circuit and so here i use the new which is negative 7 minus the old one negative 26 and then not forget here uh, there is a power index 10 the power of 9 and therefore you get 19 times 10 the power of 9 the unit for this so far is joule per kg but then we want to find energy right so what we have to do is to multiply with m simply so that's going to be 3400 0, 0 times the answer we got and just find from the calculator and so the answer is 6.46 and we round it to 2 six fix so 6.5 simply 10 to the power of 13 joule and that would simply be the answer that's all for this video it shouldn't be too hard for you to understand gravitational potential if you understand gravitational potential energy earlier in the next video i would like you to think about one thing actually two things ahead right before you start the next video or if you have time uh, referring back to this diagram uh, we have y axis to be the potential x axis to be the distance so my question is what would be the physical meaning of the slope in this graph and what would be the physical meaning of the area under the curve in this graph and that's something we will explore in the next video so see you in the next video bye